practice during the week. When I get to clean the chairs you're sitting on for COVID, I pray for each person that sits in the chair. So I want you to know I'm praying for you and I hope you're praying for me as well. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to bring uh, encouragement to each other, to remind us uh, of the forgiveness of our sins, to remind us of the hope that we have for the future and to remind us, each of us, of the, the courage and the strength that we have to carry on each day as we walk through this life uh, with each other and especially, Lord, with you and through the strength of your Holy Spirit. We give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So God's still got it in his hands. Uh, he's still got what? He's still got the world in his hands. And uh, this morning we're going to take a, a moment during the message to have communion. So, so the picture before was of Jesus and uh, we get this from uh, uh, a video that's online. You can watch it. It's Book of Mark and um, Lumos, I think it is. It's really an excellent uh, portrait of what happened with Jesus. And uh, at this moment, this is Jesus coming around the, uh, the table with, with uh, his disciples. So he was about to, to enter in a time of uh, Passover meal. And so if we go to the next slide, it says Jesus, uh, Jewish families gathered together to eat. The next slide. Uh, to commemorate the night before the morning. Thanks, Margot. Um, when they would be released, turn it off and on again. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, when the nation would uh, be released from the Egyptian uh, captivity. It was a meal eaten uh, to remember God's, 400 after, God's faithfulness after 400 years, which uh, Jewish people were enslaved for 400 years. Can you think about that for a moment? 400 years they are slaves. They are chosen people of God. Give me four minutes and sometimes people go, oh, there is no God because nothing's happening. It's four minutes away. For 400 years, what's that? 20 generations, if it was 20 years of each, 20 generations of people had been in captivity. 400 years. And for 400 years, they then ha had someone turn up. They eventually became a nation. God rescued them. Moses was there and said, we're going to go. The next day, they were, they, were packing, they were packing the stuff that night, putting blood on the door, and then moving out. And here we have Jesus later fulfilling uh, what, uh, what they were looking forward to in the coming of the Messiah, and Jesus was popular. Jesus became extremely uh, uh, popular in that time, and here we have him healing a blind man. He broke bread and fed people fish and loaves, even when there was only a small amount there. But he fed how many thousand? How many? Thank you. People and had lots left over, 12 basket loads left over. He was very popular. People started coming around, not just to hear what he had to say, but to be fed. He raised a girl who was dead. Not just one person, but a few people he raised from the dead. Crowds gathered around him, wanted to see him. The disciples were now a part of somebody who was popular, very popular. But we, but we head to this, this, this night. In darkness... The disciples come to this place that they didn't even know what's happening. They didn't even know it was being prepared. And they came and in the, in the dark of night, they came to this place and they are having a meal together. Okay, verse 70, it says this. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. Uh, while they were uh, reaching, uh, sorry, while they were reclining at the table he, and eating, he said... Truly, I tell you. Now, before we move on to the next slide. So here they are together. They're, they're, they're um, eating together. They're reclining back, celebrating this, this uh, Passover meal together. And they are um, excited because it's a wonderful celebration, remembering what had happened. Being delivered from Egypt. And so 
they're reclining at the table and Jesus leans over and says, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. Wow, Jesus, you know, what a, what a spoil this is. We're, we're coming together, we're having this meal together and we're about to have the Passover meal and you're now telling us one of you, one of us is going to betray you. They were saddened. Well, I guess they were. I would be too, wouldn't you? They were saddened and one by one they said to him, surely you don't mean me. It's one of the twelve. The one who dips the bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays uh, the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. So we have issues, we have problems. We see that uh, uh, <coughs> Joseph, if we go back in, in the Old Testament, Joseph um, could hear from the bottom of the, uh, of the pit when he was uh, being, uh, taken by his brothers and put in this pit. We could he he could he could hear that his brothers were up, up above going, shall we kill him? Or shall we set him free? Shall we sell him? Can you imagine that? And, and yet God was with Joseph. King David woke up to the fact that his son was plotting to take over the kingdom. King David, the man after God's own heart. Then we have a mother Mother of Moses put her son into a basket and sent him up the river. Another mother fled from a sword of Herod. Wow. All these things are going on. Paul, the writer of a lot of the gospel, was thrown in prison. And from prison, he wrote how we should... Go about doing church. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, it says, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And this little picture down the bottom means this is where I stop and we don't do any more slides for a bit, okay? <laughs> And this is, my, is the, my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many. So here we have this popular guy, Jesus, who, you know, we move forward in, in, uh, back now to Jesus' time and, and Jesus uh, was popular, he was everywhere, the disciples were a part of a, were a groupie, a part of a, a, a very popular guy and yet here he has been predicting that he's going to die. He's going to go to the cross. This had to happen. We know this in hindsight, but can you imagine being the disciples at that, that moment, hearing this, and then one of the twelve, one of your mates that you've been travelling with, is about to do something dastardly? So, if you've got your, your communion there with you, let's, uh, let's partake of this now and remember what Christ was doing as he gave the bread and he gave the cup and he said this is the new covenant this 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 bread is represents my body which is broken for you we're going to pray just before we eat this father we pray your blessing over this bread and this cup we pray that you would uh, use this to remind us of how wonderful your salvation plan is in Jesus' name, amen. Let's, let's eat the bread together. And it said he took the cup and he said, this is my body, uh, this is my blood which is, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. We drink this in remembrance of what he did for us. Let's drink together. Dear Lord God, we thank you for these emblems and there's something special about, about them right now uh, as we partake 
of this together, your blood and, and, and your body that was broken and shed for us. We thank you for that. Father, we think of the, the uh, disciples who were in this room and sharing this very important moment, but even more so important moment, and for them, the start of some very dark times. The very start of dark times. Lord, we, we think back of what they went through in this time, but we also know, in hindsight, what happened next. And I'm sure, Lord, that so many of them would have been reminded of what was written in Isaiah and other, other prophecies, Lord, about what was happening, but it would have been hard for them to take right now the news that they had just received of, of one of them betraying Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to jump ahead. Thanks, Margot. So he, he says, this is the, the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Then he says, and he said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it in the new kingdom of God. And then he predicts something. He says, you will all fall away. Jesus told him, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter declared, I think this is what we all would have wanted to have said, right? I would have wanted to have said this, like Peter, if I'd been in that situation. You know, if I all fall away, I will not. I will not fall away. Can you imagine that? I, I, I would hope I would have said that. And I hope I wouldn't have fallen away. But, he, you know, he, I think he answers that for all of us. Or ask that question, what I think we all would do. Oh, if they all fall away, I'm going to fall away. Oh, I won't fall away. I mean, remember Elijah? <laughs> He'd seen so many great things and yet he was concerned about the next day and I think things started to take hold of Peter. Thanks, Margot. And we know that he denied Jesus three times. Before the cock would crow, twice he would, he would deny Jesus three times. If we were to interview the disciples and ask them about their darkest hours, what do you think they would have said their darkest hours would have been? Yeah, this, that whole night leading up to the whole weekend would have been their, their darkest hours. When we look through our life and we look at the darkest hours of our life, we think, boy, maybe you're going through it right now. Maybe you're going through some pretty dark times where people you love might be hurting or people you love might be hurting you or someone else that you love or uncertainty of what's going on financially with a job or the world. Thanks, Margot. But in clarity of hindsight, we can go, when did God accomplish his greatest work? Was in those dark hours. He, he accomplished his greatest work when Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins and rose again. In those dark hours, God often does the greatest work work in our lives as well. If we'd ask them, when did God achieve his greatest work? I'm sure they would have said it was in these very same hours that were our very darkest of hours. If we were to ask them later on, I'm sure the disciples would have said that. When life is uncertain, God is not. When life is uncertain, God is not. We can move through with assurance that God has got the whole world in his hands. We missed a scripture verse in there, and it's, it, it falls in between when the disciples were having the, the Passover meal, and Judas had gone, and they're about to head up to the mount. And just before that, they sang a hymn or a song. And I'm wondering if it was, he's got the whole world in his hands. I'm wondering. I hope that song comes to you this week. In the moments of when you're feeling at your darkest, when things are starting to hit you, I hope you start singing, he's got the whole world 
In his hands has got the whole world. Now, I forget the name of this guy, but his uh, last, one of his names is Moses, the guy on the right. And does anyone know who the guy on the left is? Martin Luther King. This is when Pastor Moses was 19 years of age, and he was a pastor at that. Saved at 16, well, he was actually orphaned at 16, grew up. Uh, in America, in, in one of the toughest areas, and, and uh, where they absolutely hated on each other. He became a pastor at 19 and became a friend of, uh, of Martin Luther King Jr. This guy um, recently, or probably now 10 years ago, went to the White House to meet with President Obama with a, a few other people and uh, one of the people there telling the story is um, Andy Stanley. Andy Stanley was going to meet President uh, Barack Obama uh, just down under the White House, I believe, uh, in a room with other people who were going to meet him and, and Pastor Moses was there and they got talking, and Pastor Stanley and Pastor Moses got talking with each other. And he heard all about what uh, this, this uh, guy had been through, how the segregation had been and how people wouldn't look at you, how people would spit on you and all this sort of stuff and, and then had lost a good friend in Martin Luther King. Had seen all this, had seen all this. And um, and he said to, to Pastor Andy, he says, he said, Pastor Andy Stanley, and he sort of looked off in the distance and he says, and we know that in all things God works for those, or for the good of those who love him. And that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. And just like he couldn't finish it, Andy Stanley said, he finished it off, he said, and who are called according to his purpose. So Pastor Moses was looking off in the distance, started quoting it, and was obviously thinking through all the things that had gone on in his, in his life, how uh, the African Americans were, were mistreated and how it doesn't have to matter what colour your skin are, you can still be dis mistreated. And he'd worked through all this and stood up for so many people. And here he is, meeting African American president. Barack Obama. Stan, Andy Stanley says, I'm here to meet the president, but I've met a saint. And moments later, Pastor Moses as well will turn and, and meet with President Obama. Just before that, just after Andy Stanley had finished that scripture verse, Pastor Moses said, yes, he does, but sometimes he takes a while. 400 years the children of Israel waited for deliverance. And then we see Jesus come on the, on the scene and delivers us. And today we have another gift, his Holy Spirit, who enables us. And this very morning we had the Lord's Supper together, the Passover, or the Lord's Supper together. Remembering what God has done for us in our past, forgiven us for our sins. Remembering what he does for us in our future, gives us hope and gives us, at this very moment, courage and strength to make it through the days where we're not certain. When life is uncertain, God is not. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the hallelujah that David said and, and that is true. We are saying hallelujah. What a wonderful saviour you are. We thank you for dying on the cross, Jesus. We thank you that you rose again. We thank you that in the midst of all that goes on that you are still in control. You still have a plan. Help us to fall back and just trust in you each day. Days when we physically if something's wrong in our bodies and we're just not 
feeling right and we have to pull ourselves up by our socks. Days when things aren't operating right, like uh, the PowerPoint for me and all that sort of stuff, Lord. You still got it in, ch- in control. Help us to sit back and relax and, and to allow you to do, the, do the, everything we can with what we've got and allow you to take care of the rest. Father, we thank you that you are in control and that you still have this whole world in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Joe, I was wondering if we could finish with that song again. Is that okay? He's got the whole world in his hands. I hope it sticks with you. If nothing else, <laughs> nothing else from the message sticks with you this week, that that song sticks with you and appears at the very right moment that you need it.